Good morning and welcome to the best football show. Uh, this is Brian Baldy. You're speaking to you right now at Baldy NFL. Uh, you can find me on all the platforms from uh, Instagram to Twitter to uh, threads to uh, YouTube, you name it. Uh, you can find the best football show wherever you get your free Odyssey app. Download it, uh, like, subscribe, all that kind of good stuff. Let you know what we think. We're here just about every day just talking football. Today, uh, we started talking about the AFC North. Interesting division, right? AFC North. Uh, last year, Baltimore won it 13 and 4. Cleveland in the playoffs at 11 6. Pittsburgh in the playoffs at 10 and 7 with Mason Rudolph. Played quarterback in Cincinnati was 9 and 8. Let's talk about Pittsburgh and Cincinnati here today because uh, we have discussed Baltimore, Cleveland already. Let's finish out this division. Pittsburgh obviously has been in the news throughout free agency, throughout this offseason, trading Kenny Pickett to the Philadelphia Eagles, letting Mason Rudolph walk, uh, letting Mitch Trubisky walk back to Buffalo. And here we go, <clears throat> Pittsburgh with a new quarterback room. And it's an amazing thing what they have accomplished, where the quarterback is the most important ingredient to the success of your football team, and they picked up two. They picked up Russell Wilson, who's coming off a season in Denver, okay, 15 starts, benched the final two weeks, basically told, go find work someplace else for the most part. And he did. And Denver's paying most of his salary. Pittsburgh is playing $1.2 million, something like that. And that's all, they're, that's all they have to pony up for, Russell Wilson. It's a one-year look. They could parlay it into a big contract. We don't know. But he's got a one-year deal with the Pittsburgh Steelers for basically a little over a million dollars. And then there's Justin Fields. I don't know what happened to the market for Justin Fields. It got uh, saturated very quickly in free agency. Uh, no question about it. We saw, you know, Mac Jones go and all these different quarterbacks fly around the league, basically looking at backup contracts. And Justin Fields sitting there in Chicago, Ryan Poles couldn't believe it. Um, he got a six round pick for Justin Fields, that if he plays 51% of the snaps in Pittsburgh this year, it could be a fourth-round pick next year. Not even in a pick this year. I, you know, he's on his rookie contract. He's owed $3.4 million. I mean, they got Russell Wilson and Justin Fields this year for less than basically $5 million, for $4 million and change, and a six-round pick. The New York Giants paid Drew Locke Five million dollars to come and compete for a job. I, it, it's 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 mind blowing. So I don't understand. I'm a Justin Fields fan. I think Justin Fields better than Gardner Minshew. I think he's better than Drew Locke. I think he's better than all these guys that got signed. Okay, that's me. That's I watch every game. I love the kid. Nobody has had more uncertainty around him than Justin Fields. Whether it's coaching changes, general manager changes. Offensive coordinator changes, you name it. He's, he's suffered through it all in a horrible, horrible, like turmoil of an organization. And the Bears maybe get it right with Caleb Williams. But he's in Pittsburgh now. And I hadn't seen a coach like Mike Tomlin. Shoot you straight. Motivator. It's a good spot for him. And we'll see. We'll see what happens. But anyways, Pittsburgh's got two new quarterbacks. So what do you get? I mean, last year... They win 10 games. They lose Cam Hayward in the first week of the season to a groin pool. Misses the next eight weeks. I mean, he's the most important interior defensive lineman on that whole team. One of the best in the league. With all of that, with the quarterbacks of Kenny Pickett, Mitch Trubisky, Mason Roof, they took a grand total of 13 touchdown passes. Five to George Pickens. Five to Deontay Johnson. Two to Paul Firemuth. I mean... 13 touchdown passes. Only the Jets threw fewer touchdown passes in the season last year. We know how dreadful they were. I mean, you just got to got to believe that Arthur Jones coming in, the new offensive coordinator from, you know, from his head coaching duties in Atlanta, former offensive coordinator in Tennessee. You got to believe they're going to be better in offense. You just got to believe it. I mean, they were tw the 28th ranked offense in football last year. Uh, they ran the ball pretty well. They were the sixth-ranked defense in football. They lose Deontay Johnson. They cut um, 
Allen Robinson. They need wide receivers. They just signed, I think, yesterday, Cordero Patterson. You debate whatever Cordero Patterson is. The guy's been a kick returner in this league. He's been a running back in this league. He's been a playmaker in this league. He's been a wide receiver in this league. He still has got juice. It's not, it doesn't solve a lot of their passing issues. But they're need, they're going to need wide receivers in this draft. And the draft is full of wide receivers. Okay, so let's see. Last year, the emphasis in Pittsburgh was rebuilding the offensive line. They went out and drafted Broderick Jones out of Georgia. I think when they drafted him, he was 20 years old. Maybe he was 21, but I think he was 20 when they drafted him. Sure looked good to me. Isaac Sayamalo was a huge priority in free agency. He started all, all 18 games for the Pittsburgh Steelers last year. One thing about Isaac Sayamalo, you never know he's there. Like, he doesn't say too much. He doesn't get penalized too much. But he played great football for him. And the running backs, Jalen Warren, um, they had – Really good seasons last year. Uh, they ran the ball well. So defensively, they went out and got themselves Patrick Queen. Okay, uh, him and Alana Roberts will be the starting inside linebackers this year. Um, they got Dante Jackson from the Carolina Panthers to go opposite Joey Porter. They got their corners. So let's let's look at what they could do here. How could Pittsburgh get back in the race with the Baltimore Ravens? and the Cleveland Browns. How can they get back to winning the division? The owner has come out and said, being 10-7, and seven, having a winning record, it's not good enough. Everybody's hearing it. From Mike Tomlin all the way down, Andy Weidel, Omar Khan, the personnel department, they've all heard the message. 10-7, and seven, another non-losing season, winning record, it's not good enough. They haven't won a playoff game since 2016. It's a long drought. You know, you walk in the Pittsburgh Steelers facility, you see six Vincent T. Lombardi trophies. All right? That's what they're about. They're about winning Lombardis. So, how do they do that? So, they've got the – they've got, you know, their first, their second, their third, and their fourth round pick. They don't have a – they don't have a fifth or a seventh. They've got two sixth round picks. So, they pick number 20. I'm thinking they drafted Broderick Jones out of Georgia. They drafted a big tight end. Darnell Washington out of Georgia. What if they went back to Georgia and took a Marius Mims, just a mammoth size of a human being? Started eight games at Georgia, but played in a lot. Played a lot of games. They rotate players, offensive and defense. That's what Kirby Smart does. It's not uh, It's not a knock on these guys. Marius Mims is 6'8", he's 340 pounds. He's got a wingspan from here to – from Pittsburgh to Cleveland, Okay. Um, he's, he's enormous. What if they went and put Broderick Jones at left tackle, Amarius Mims at right tackle, and they said, let's go pound the rock. Let's go run the ball. Let's go crease these teams the way Baltimore does. And then we'll ask Russell Wilson, you know, in the second round, you go draft yourself, Lad McConkey, you go draft yourself a wide receiver. Um, you know, and, and maybe draft two wide receivers. <clears throat> I don't know. These wide receivers look like they're ready to play right away. Just a thought. Now, they could draft wide receiver in the first round, tackle in the second round. They could do that. But I'm saying fix the offensive line once and for all. You could draft a center in the first round. You could draft an offensive tackle in the first round. You draft a, a center, you know, Zach Frazier from West Virginia, second round with the 51st pick, probably about where he's going to go. Go fix the offensive line once and for all. Make it a strength of your football organization. Sounds like something the Steelers might do. Always can find wide receivers. There's going to be wide receivers cut. You know, June 1st cuts, there's going to be wide receivers out there. So uh, fix the offensive line, run the football. Uh, that would be a good start for Pittsburgh. Cincinnati. I remember on August 4th, I'll, I won't forget the date, Andrew Siciliano and myself were at Cincinnati, Cincinnati Bengals training camp on August 4th. We had just gone to Pittsburgh, Baltimore, day off on the 3rd, went to Cincinnati. Joe Burrow's out with a pulled calf, badly pulled calf muscle. And after practice, 
Jamar Chase sat down with us. And Jamar Chase is awesome. Awesome kid. Great interview. Calls it like he sees it. Shoots you straight. It's just, you know, love Jamar Chase. Can't get enough. And obviously he's a great player. But Jamar Chase told Andrew Siciliano and myself something that was eye-opening. And by the way, Joe Burrow's father, Jamar Chase's father, they're at practice that day. Okay, so I, I got to meet both dads. And Jamar told us that day he hoped that Joe Burrow wasn't going to be ready, wouldn't play week one. Not that he wouldn't be ready, just hope he didn't play week one. We, he said, we need Joe Burrow in January. And what he was saying was, don't you dare come onto the field before you're ready to come onto the field. And Joe Burrow came onto the field before he was ready. He played the first half. They were awful first month of the season. Awful. And Joe Burrow was on one leg. He couldn't even do a play action pass. He couldn't take the ball from under center and he couldn't move. It was horrible to watch. Everybody remembers. And then, you know, obviously against Baltimore later on, you know, week 10, whatever it was, you know, he's out for the season, fractures the wrist. So Joe Burrow, two out of the last four seasons, has started 10 games. Cincinnati's not winning the division without Joe Burrow, although Jacob Browning came in and outplayed Joe. So I, I shouldn't say that. Jacob Browning played great. He was four and three as a starter. He outplayed Joe, statistically outplayed him. Um, but nobody's going to compare Jacob Browning to Joe Burrow, just the way it worked out because of Joe's, just how curtailed he was by the injuries last year. They need Joe on the field for 17 games. When he's on the field for 17, their playoff team, He's an MVP candidate. He's just a difference maker. He's just that good. So what have the Cincinnati done? Went out and traded for, you know, Orlando Brown Jr., Zeus, to play left tackle last year. They just signed Trent Brown. They've got the biggest bookend set of tackles, maybe in the history of pro football. When Trent Brown and Zeus stand next to each other, yeah, it's just a human eclipse. And I think Trent Brown, when you watch him play, he's – a better right tackle than he is a left tackle. So he's got a natural spot. Um, so maybe that that's a, a step in the right direction to get that tackle situation straightened out, protect Joe Burrow. Joe Mixon is gone. They bring in Zach Moss, who played really well when Jonathan Taylor was banged up last year in Indianapolis or unsigned, all those things that happened to him. Zach Moss played really well. So it looks to me like they still might need a running back. But defensively, they, you know, they, they really went backwards last year. They weren't very good at all. And they had been a good defense, a really good defense. So they bring in Sheldon, you know, they, they lose DJ Reader, who's been a rock in the middle of that defense. Great free agent signing a couple of years ago, maybe three years ago. But Sheldon Rankins played great um, in with the Jets two years ago, played great in Houston. He comes back, played defensive tackle. Um, they went out and got themselves Von Bell. They bring him back. They bring back. They signed Geno Stone from the Baltimore Ravens, who had six interceptions last year. So they upgrade the safety position. Uh, they lose Cheeto. I think they need secondary help in a big way. And so, you know, they're sitting there, um, you know, and who knows? They're going to lose Tyler Boyd. We got to figure out what happens with T. Higgins. It seems murky if T. Higgins is a Cincinnati Bengals player next year. What's going to happen? But, you know, they have the 18th pick in the draft. They could go wide receiver and just keep this, just keep the offense strong. You know, losing Tyler Boyd, they, they've had the, the three amigos of Boyd and Higgins um, and Jamar forever there. I mean, they have a lot of flexibility with the 18th pick. They could go corner. Quinion Mitchell makes a lot of sense out of Toledo. I mean, he's a top three corner. Maybe Terry and Arnold. You know, I mean, you look at the guys that are Wiggins. You know, it's Arnold Wiggins and Mitchell are all first-round picks at corner. You could pick and slot them any way you want. I think Quinion Mitchell is one unbelievable player, but he could be there at 18. It would be hard to pass him up. But wide receiver is – they're loaded in this draft. Uh, and so who knows? Uh, they could go wide receiver and just keep it – keep that position strong, maybe – they keep T. Higgins for one more year, but lose him next year. All right. You know, you draft a wide receiver. You still stay strong with Jamar. 
um, to a point where you just can't double team them, you know, all game long, like the way that they do. I like Zach Taylor a great deal. I like the way he builds this team. I like the way that they have stayed competitive, even with all the injuries last year. You know, they were still nine and eight. They're still competitive. Somehow found nine wins. So I think that's, you know, Cincinnati and, and Pittsburgh right now. This is the best division in football. I said it last year, four teams winning records. There's just no – it's hard to hard to win in that division. Those division games are must-see TV. I don't care who it is. Battle of Ohio, Pittsburgh, Baltimore is still a – Marquee game every single year, no matter what the records are. Uh, so this is the AFC North. I'm finishing up that. We'll get to probably the AF AFC South tomorrow. Tune in. Uh, we'll take a look at a very improved division in the AFC South tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in to the best football show. I'm Brian Baldinger at Baldy NFL. Uh, please join me. Uh, we're going to be. We're going to look ahead to the draft. Uh, I'm breaking down every position. I got my top five. I'm still slotting them. You know how I look at the top five position by position. We'll get to that, you know, as we're 29 days away from the draft. A lot to talk about. There's still trickling of player movement, you know, day to day to day. We'll, we'll hit on some of that as well. But tomorrow, we'll break down the AFC South. Please tune in. Thanks for watching. This has been the best football show.